high. In 1995, NASA decided to launch the Mars Climate Orbiter at the end of 1998. The purpose of this mission was to study the history of the Martian climate, atmosphere and surface changes and to act as the communication relay for the Mars Polar Lander which was scheduled to reach Mars soon after it. In 1993, NASA started the Mars Survey program with the objective of conducting an ongoing series of missions to explore Mars. The program had to accomplish three missions: the Mars Global Survey scheduled to launch late 1996, the Mars Climate Orbiter scheduled to launch late 1998, and the Mars Polar Lander scheduled to launch early 1999. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory was the lead center for this program and it created the Mars Survey project. The Mars Survey project was responsible to define the missions, develop both spacecraft and all payload elements, test and launch both flight systems for all the three missions. The Mars Survey Operations project was implemented in a partnering mode. Lockheed Martin Aeronautics was a company that performed all spacecraft operations including real-time command and monitoring. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory was responsible for overall project and mission management, quality assurance, navigation, mission planning and sequence integration each of these teams was responsible for planning and sequencing the instrument observations processing and archiving the data and performing offline data analysis Seven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff of NASA's Mars Climate Orbiter as we continue to explore the mysteries of the Red Planet. On December 11, 1998, the Delta II launch vehicle launching from Launch Complex 17A and B at Cape Canaveral Large Station, Florida, carried the 629 kg Mars Climate Orbiters to space. It carried instruments to map the planet's surface, profile, the structure of the atmosphere, detect surface ice reservoirs and dig for traces of water beneath Mars' rusty surface. Nine and a half months after launch, in September 1999, the Mars Climate Orbiter was to fire its main engine for the Mars orbit insertion to achieve an elliptical orbit around Mars. The spacecraft was to then skim through Mars' upper atmosphere for several weeks in a technique called aerobraking. This is a common technique where satellites use the atmosphere of the planet to reduce velocity and enter a circular orbit. Everything was going well since launch. All spacecraft systems had been performing normally until an abrupt loss of contact on September 23, 1999 after the start of the Mars orbit in session burn. The orbiter entered the Martian orbit in a lower than expected altitude and did not survive. It should have been burnt due to the very high friction on its entry into the Martian atmosphere. Why did this happen? In short, the root cause of the failure was a simple mathematical error. Thruster data has to be provided to the spacecraft to fire its engines and to enter into orbit. In the ground station, NASA used a computer program to calculate the impulse of the thrusters on both the spacecraft. Data from the software is processed and sent to the orbiter to fire its engines and maintain orbit. But the software gave the impulse data in English units, pounds, seconds, instead of the metric units, newton seconds. So, every impulse data provided to the orbiter was underestimated by a factor of 4.45, which is the conversion factor between these two units. An erroneous trajectory was computed using this data, and the orbiter was 116 km closer to the planet than expected. This was too low for it to survive. The operations navigation team was responsible for navigating the spacecraft in space. The team was not fully familiar with the spacecraft, especially with its altitude control system. Hence, the significance of various minor anomalies were not understood. Also, a separate navigation team was used during the development and test phase. A different operations navigation team was formed shortly after the launch and did not participate in any of the testing of the ground software. The team also did not participate in the critical design review process. A trajectory correction maneuver 4 was performed to get the spacecraft ready for orbital initiation. But the altitude was too low after the correction maneuver. 
In case of this contingency, a trajectory correction maneuver 5 was in place to raise the spacecraft to a safer altitude. It was discussed verbally but was not performed. Two things prevented the team from executing TCM-5. 1. The team was not prepared to do such a maneuver as it was not analyzed and tested before the launch. 2. Such a maneuver will alter the duration of aerobraking. This may affect its support to the Mars Polar Lander which was scheduled to arrive shortly. It was clear that the operations navigations team did not communicate their trajectory concerns effectively to the spacecraft operations team or the project management. One contributing factor to this was the team's assumption that the Mars Climate Orbiter had the hardware and software of the Mars Surveyor program which was a huge success. This made the operations navigation team to be confident even with insufficient knowledge. The team was also working on all three missions of the Mars Surveyor program simultaneously. The software interface specification is a set of rules that every software in NASA has to follow. It was developed but was not properly used. End-to-end -end testing to validate the ground software performance and its applicability to the specification was not performed. Had any one of those reasons been addressed, the project would have been a success. Lessons learned A proper software validation for the compliance of requirements has to be performed, especially when the data is being transferred between different teams. Several methods should be adopted to arrive at final data and has to be checked with the primary method adopted. Every team has to be given all necessary information related to the project by conducting face-to-face -face meetings. All contingencies has to be considered in the simulation phase and the team should be fully prepared to act in the case of a contingency. Lack of communication can break a project. Hence, communication is very important and a proper method of communication should be established in a project. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.